Hi there, this is Luisa Heinzel and today I want to share one of my makes that I've created for the Halloween 2023 release by Zizix and Tim Holtz. At first glance, this project doesn't seem to have anything to do with Zizix, right? <laughs> well, that's because I want to create a little wall decoration with a Halloween scenery and for that I need a base. And for this base, I'm going to use this vintage book. I've already cut the cover and most of the pages in half to create a little shelf where I want to put my scenery later. Here you can see me gluing the pages back together so that the book can't open anymore in the end. And I'm also gluing the second part of the cover back to its original place. But now it's only a little bit further to the back than it was before so the, that we get a little shelf. I've used some clamps to make sure that everything can stay in place and dry really really well and now I'm going to try to figure out where I want to destroy this shelf a little bit. <laughs> so here you can see me making some notes directly on this cover and I say notes it seems perhaps a little bit weird, but that's how my brain works. I need some kind of an imagination where I want to do my things. So um, here I have embossed a little bit of black craft stock with one of the new embossing folders from the release. And I've also used some Lost Shadow Distress Oxide ink to bring out this gorgeous pattern of the embossing folder. And as you can see, this is just an amazing folder, isn't it? <laughs> so I want to create this wall there on the bottom and I'm gluing this down with some gel medium. I'm using a brayer to brayer over that to make sure that everything is really, really well attached. And after that is dry, I'm using my sanding disc and also my finger tool <laughs> to roughen the edges of this thing a little bit and to get rid of the overlapping paper that I still have there. For the left and the right edge, I've mainly used the sanding disc to get this really cool and worn look. And on the bottom, I've torn the paper with my fingers and then I went over that with my sanding disc because on the bottom, I wanted to have a really rough edge and I wanted that you can see that it is obviously torn. I also went over the complete surface with my sanding disc to bring out the color of the craft paper. That looks really cool, I think. And then I'm going to use my absolutely favorite tool, that is this hammer, <laughs> to destroy some of the areas of this little shelf. And I've started um, with a relatively big damage, as you can see there. And if you have never done that, um, I can encourage you to try it out because it's so much fun. But I also want to mention, please take your time if you have never done that before. You can see this video runs way faster than this process was in reality. That's because this took me so long and, you know, I can't make a video that is five hours long. But, um, and that wouldn't be enough <laughs> for this project. But what I want to say is, please take your time and look at that also from a little bit further away to see if your damages are big enough, if you like it, if you want to do more or if you want to leave it as it is. This took me really a long time because yeah you have to decide um, if you want to have more damages if you have too much then you can't uh, you know you can't repair it or something mm, to make this really sturdy I've used some collage medium from Ranger to put that in between of those single layers that I've just made there and especially the book pages themselves which are peeking out there are of course relatively flimsy now and I wanted to make this really sturdy because later on I want to use different mediums and for that it's important that that is really really hard and of course um, I don't want that 
that can be destroyed. Yeah, even if it hangs on a wall or if it's standing in your craft room and no one is touching it, I want to have my things sturdy. And collage medium is really helpful for this. And you can also shape those damages really well. As you can see, I'm just using my scissors to hold the things down. And then I'm heating that up a little bit to make sure that everything dries really fast. Uh, I'm also going over this whole thing here with a, a thin coat of collage medium to get the same look to the whole surface. And then I have prepared this piece of watercolor paper where I've just played around with some oxide sprays and I've stamped with one of the new embossing folders. Perhaps you can see this really subtle pattern in the background. I love stamping with embossing folders. It's, it's just a gorgeous Thing. And I've made myself a stencil from one of the die cuts um, also. So those little dots are also made with the help of um, a die cut from the new release. Um, by the way, I will link everything down below for you so that you can check out the single um, things that are available with this release and that you also can check out the names and, you know, everything that you need to know. Um, but what I'm trying to say is, if you don't have stencils, you can also make your own stencils just by using your die cuts and cut out um, some interesting pieces just from a piece of paper. I don't use plastic or something like that. I just use a piece of paper, sturdier paper, of course, like watercolor cardstock, for example. And then I stencil through that and I have a really nice pattern that fits my whole project. I've stenciled here with translucent texture paste so, so that we get a really interesting look for the background as well. To make the top part of this thing match the rest, I'm using my hammer again. But this time, as you can see, the damages are not so big than on the bottom part of this thing because, you know, when you have the bigger damages on the bottom, you have a base for this whole thing and the weight I mean, the weight for the eye yeah, is on the bottom and that was important for me. Here I'm using some collage medium crazing. Alternatively, you could also use some crackle paint or crackle paste. I think the collage medium crazing is no longer available. Um, perhaps some of the online shops still have it. I don't know. Um, this I have for a very long time and of course <laughs> I want to use it and I really love this medium. But if you don't have that, um, any other crackle medium would also work. I'm applying this here next to my damages so that it looks like these broken parts of the book and this medium is one. Yeah, I wanted to have a little bit, bit more of a definition of those destroyed areas. While that is drying, I'm taking a little piece of cardstock or actually that is called cardboard. I'm always mixing those words up so that is four millimeters thick, really, really sturdy. And I'm also covering that with this embossed paper. That is the same paper and the same folder which I've used for the wall itself. And I'm also using my sanding disc to sand the edges to get the same look like the rest so that I can cover up the book pages that you can still see there with this little piece later. And when you do something like this, of course, you have a little problem because you can see the color of the cardboard. And that is not so nice. Because of that, I'm going to take some distress paint. This is frayed burlap. And I'm dipping the edges of this little thing into the paint. And then I get an interesting color and I can't see this cardboard color anymore. Um, and yeah, <laughs> That's cool, isn't it? It's so easy to just dip it in there and then it's cover, covered up. And I really like this look. And that matches the color of the craft paper also really, really well. Here I'm using some brushed corduroy Distress Oxide Ink Refiller. And I'm going to do a little thing that I found out for myself that worked really, really well. Um, I don't know if you if it's meant to do like that but for me it works so uh, what I'm doing here is I'm checking the moment when the collage medium crazing is 
not totally dry. Yeah, it's still a little bit wet and flexible, I would say. And in that moment, I'm applying the Distress Oxide Ink Refiller and I'm bringing that around with my finger and additionally a little bit of water. And for some reason, now both of these mediums get one once they are totally dry. You know, normally, if you use some texture paste or crackle paste or also the crazing medium, if you let that dry completely and then add ink, that wouldn't work because the ink can't dry on this slippery surface. But if you apply that <clears throat> while the medium is not completely dry, something happens. I can't explain that, you know, I, I'm not a chemist. Um, I can't explain that so well, but something happens that both of the mediums get one and that the ink dries and nothing rubs off later. And that's really cool. And that gives a really, um, I would say, different crackled effect than if you would let the paste dry completely and then go, go over that with a crayon, for example. That's a completely different look. And I really enjoy using the oxide ink refillers for that because they give this extreme oxidation more oxidation than if you would use a spray or um, the ink pad or something like that. I want to have a little bit more contrast and for that I'm going to use some darker brown ink also from a refiller and I'm applying that carefully to some of those areas. I don't want to overload this with brown but I want to have some variation and I want to create some depth on those areas where it's damaged. And for the same reason, I'm going to use some embossing glaze here to create a really, really cool look. Because um, when you add embossing glaze on some areas here, it looks like it is burnt. But it's something like an optical illusion in my eyes. Because when you, for example, burn paper with fire, then that is matte, isn't it? It's really dark nearly black but it's matte and this looks like it was made with fire but it's glossy and that is such a cool thing in my eyes I mean I know that it's that this is probably not um, everyone's taste but ah, if you think oh that looks interesting please try that out it's just such a cool effect and what that also does is it makes the things especially those edges really really sturdy don't do what I'm doing here. Don't throw your powder, <laughs> your glaze to the table. Oh, <laughs> it's so good that video editing is existing because, <laughs> you know, when you freak out, you can still cut it out later. So here <laughs> I'm preparing some moons and I want to have my moons really, really dimensional. So I've cut out several different layers with the help of the new die cut set. And then I've glued them on top of each other. Um, I'm using a pokey tool to get rid of the glue, which is squeezing out here and there. You know, uh, if you are not a really, really, you know, clean gluer, <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> then that can happen. But a pokey tool or a needle or something like that, an awl is really helpful to get rid of this um, glue. And I've glued several different layers of this moon on top of each other to build a really sturdy and dimensional piece. Perhaps you are asking how many layers of paper shall I glue on top of each other? Well, I can't really give you an answer for that because that's of course depending on the weight of your paper that you are using, how thick your paper is and um, it's depending on the size of your shelf. If you want to make also such a shelf from a book, then it's of course depending on the proportions that you want to have. But as you can see, hopefully here, I'm trying that out in between of my gluing process. So when I have glued um, some pieces on top of each other, I'm just taking that and holding that to the shelf to see if it's already thick enough or if I want to add more layers. Um, and I think it's also a little bit personal preference how thick you want to have that. 
since I've used white paper for cutting those pieces out, I have this white edge around the moon. And of course, that's nothing that I want to have there. So I'm taking some frayed burlap distress paint again. And um, this little thingy there, you know, that's such a thing where you normally clean your ears with. And <laughs> I've just used that to apply that to the edge. And here I'm taking some lace to give the moon and also the other moons that I've prepared in the meantime, a little base and a little bit more interest. I didn't want to glue them just to the shelf, but I wanted to have, you know, this Halloweenish feeling. And I have to say, I'm here in Austria. I was born in Germany and now I'm here in Austria. But in both countries, Halloween is not, not such a big thing as it is in, for example, America. And for me, <laughs> this was relatively challenging to get something that I like to get something that is interesting and to get something that is like a little bit Halloweenish and typical Halloweenish. Do you know what I mean? So with this make, I wanted to try to get a combination of my own feelings, my own emotions, my own imagination of Halloween and a typical Halloween thing, if that makes sense. And I also want to write Happy Halloween with some letters from an older Zizix die cut set. And I want to have these letters standing on the shelf. And to be honest, that was a really big challenge. I thought, okay, let's glue several layers of these letters on top of each other. To be clear, these are eight layers of paper. Um, and then I've also added some paint and some um, embossing powder later. So that was really, really much work. But... I've so enjoyed it. This was such, it was like meditation. I can't, I can't explain that. It was so cool. And to have all of these tiny pieces and knowing that I later on will have a really, really cool writing there on my thing. Ah, that gave me so, so much motivation. So um, yeah, the plan is to glue all of these little guys on top of each other. There I have them. Then I've added some spray stain. Ooh. I couldn't see which color it was. I think this is uh, ground espresso, Whew, hopefully, but that really doesn't matter. I wanted to have a really dark brown to make them look like they were made out of wood. And in a second, I will emboss them so that they also look a little bit slimy and wet. <laughs> because that was my imagination of something Halloween-ish. Do you know what I mean? So while the letters are drying, I'm going to use some Oxide Inks refiller. This is um, Freight Burlap and Brushed Corduroy. If you know my channel, you know that is my absolutely favorite combination. But I also think that are really great colors for Halloween projects. That gives it this really spooky look. And I wanted to have this lace colored in this, yeah, like really slimy and Halloweenish colors. And now um, the letters are dry and I'm going to use some frosted crystal embossing powder to emboss parts of these letters. So for that, I've just taken my tweezers and I've dipped them into the powder to have a really good control over the amount of powder that I'm applying here. And I've done several layers so that I get yeah, more like, uh, you know, Frosted crystal is normally meant to be matte in the end and frosted. But if you apply several layers, then you get this frosted and glossy effect at the same time. The first layer will turn out matte and the second layer will turn out glossy. And if you do that a little bit irregular, you have a really cool look in the end. I will show you a close-up of these letters in the end of the video, so perhaps you can then understand better what I'm talking about here. Um, I uh, am taking my ruler. <laughs> That is also a relatively rare situation here on my channel, but I wanted to make sure that these letters are in the middle and centered on this shelf. And I'm really sorry that you can't see anything what I'm doing here exactly, because um, I can't, I couldn't turn the book 
you know, I couldn't um, lay it flat to my table so that you can see what I'm doing there. Otherwise, my letters um, wouldn't have been in the same correct place. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you what I have done. I've just taken some grid paste and I've applied the grid paste with a spatula to the shelf. And then I've just um, put the letters into the paste so when the paste is dry the letters are really sturdy and they are like glued down to the shelf and to be honest i was really surprised how well that worked you can see my heat gun coming into the video screen uh, for a few seconds here and there i want to say normally um, you don't heat up your mediums yeah it's not so good to dry your mediums with a heat gun and perhaps you're wondering why I'm using a heat gun here. I've just used it for a few seconds, just a little tiny time to make sure that the grid paste gets a little, 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 little bit of drying, but only a tiny little bit. I don't want to have bubbles in my grid paste by overheating it. Yeah, please make sure that you don't put too much heat to your grid paste. Otherwise, you will have some really like gum material in the end. And of course, that's nothing that we want. And if you put too much heat, my experience um, is that then the paste doesn't dry completely. If you let it air dry, it's really hard later and those letters will stay in there forever. Really sturdy. While that is drying, I'm uh, preparing some of the botanicals, which also come from one of the new die cut sets from the new release. And I've decided that I want to have this really simple. If you know my channel and if you know my other projects, you know I love playing around with die cuts. And I also love, mm, that is not what I want to say, with botanical die cuts. And I love to overload things. Yeah, If I am going to make a botanical collage for example and I'm using die cuts then I really like to make those giant bouquets and overload the things but for this I thought it would be better to have only three tiny accents three of these botanicals to have the focus on the single pieces that are building this whole scenery don't know if that makes sense and I also wanted to have them thicker than only <clears throat> oh, excuse me, please. Thicker than only one layer. So I've also glued some layers of paper on top of each other. And the top layer um, is um, on one of the botanicals, a black paper. The other one is just colored with some oxide ink. And the last one I have left white. To make sure that my Halloween decoration can stand by itself later, I'm going to use a second book. This is also a vintage book and as you can see I've covered it with some gel medium to make it matte on the one hand to make sure that tiny pieces which are damaged on the spine can't fall off. But the main reason is to glue the pages together and here you can see exactly how I do that. That is so easy. So there's now no glue in between of the single pages. Yeah, I've just taken the book some clamps and then I went around the book with some gel medium it automatically goes in between of the pages and if you add several different layers of that the book can't open anymore really easy you don't need much glue for that here I'm taking some tiny clamps and in a second here we go some bigger clamps <laughs> <laughs> to clamp that together so that it is um, really sturdy and that it holds its shape and that it can dry completely. And I've left this overnight to make sure that this gel medium dries completely. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> now I can take this and I can decide if I want to hang that to my wall as a really thick and dimensional decoration or if I want to put that into a shelf, because for this I don't need, uh, I don't necessarily need a wall because it can stand by its own. Yeah, if the clamps are removed, the second bo book um, is just that it is thicker and then it can stand by itself. Do you know what I mean? And it can't fall over. 
So here in the end, you can see some close ups of the details. And I'm really hoping that you like this project and that you perhaps are motivated to make something like this by yourself and for your own room. If you want to know more about the new Halloween 2023 release by Tim Holtz and Zizix, please check out the info box of this video. I will link every information down below for you. You can also go to timholtz.com and get some more information about this release. And you can also watch the replay of the Tim Holtz live video if you have missed that. One question, why? <laughs> <laughs> but don't panic the replay of course is still available and you can watch it there and see all of the other really really gorgeous makes from the other makers there's so much inspiration and you can do so many different things with this new release it's just awesome i had a blast creating these things and this is of course not the last thing that you will see me creating with this new release so stay tuned for more ideas for more inspiration and i would be really happy if you share some of your own makes on social media You can tag me and it's also really cool if you tag Tim um, so that we can see what you have created and that we can inspire each other. Here in the end, you can also see how it looks when this whole thing stands by itself. And I really, really love this. I am so in love with these letters. Ah, that looks so cool. That looks so slimy. And it's a little bit like typical Halloweenish and a little bit modern at the same time, isn't it? What do you think about this? Would you like to put this into your craft room? Please leave a comment and tell me what you think about this. And have a very great time creating your own Halloween things. And hopefully we will see you the next time with a new creative idea. Have a very great day and see you the next time. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.